Okay, today I'm going to do a demo on how to set up Cryo with Kubernetes on Fedora and show what uh, what Cryo is trying to do and uh, how you can use it and uh, play around with it on your own. So if you're unfamiliar with what Cryo is, um, it is a, right here, a container, uh, it's it's a container, uh, a runtime for a container runtime for Kubernetes. So Kubernetes uh, interfaces with the container runtimes through an interface called the CRI, or the container runtime interface. And um, it, any runtime that's on the other end of the pipe from Kubernetes that can talk CRI can run containers. And so um, right now, Docker is the default that does this, and there is um, a shim that converts CRI calls into something that Docker understands. But what Cryo seeks to do is to be a runtime strictly for Kubernetes. And so Docker really has a lot of features that aren't uh, aren't useful in an ops scenario, especially when you're running it underneath, underneath Kubernetes and aren't using the orchestration features of Docker. You're using Kubernetes instead, in which case all you really need is a container runtime, which Docker is really um, too big for doing just that. And so what Cryo aims to do is to be a, a, a very minimal toolbox for running containers underneath Kubernetes. And so I'm going to show you how to do that real quick on Fedora 26. So what I have over here is a brand new Fedora 26 uh, box. I haven't done anything except sync the repo so that the demo goes faster. But just recently, um, the Fedora maintainers that are working on Cryo have created alpha packages so, uh, for Cryo. Uh, which makes the installation procedure a lot simpler than a video I've done in the past. So I felt the need to refresh it. So um, what I'm going to do, let's see, copy this. Um, so you won't need to do this in the future. What I've done is I've downloaded the alpha package out of Koji, which is Fedora's build system. Um, soon it will be in the repositories and you won't need to do this. So um, I'm going to install Cryo. And in the future, when it's in the repos, all you'll need is this part right here. So we're going to install that real quick. Hopefully it's quick. Kind of rolling the mirror lottery here. Let's see if we can't get a better one. There we go. So the Cryo packages do not include the CNI plugins, but Cryo does need the CNI plugins. And hopefully in the future, the CNI plugins will be packaged as a package in Fedora and then just be a, de a dependent package of Cryo and uh, some of the stuff I'll, I'm doing here in a minute you won't need to do. But as of right now, they're not packaged, so you need to do that kind of stuff manually. So um, we need to download the CNI plugins. Cryo expects them to be on this path, opt CNI bin. So we're going to make that path. And then we are going to, um, if you're unfamiliar with CNI, what CNI is, is the container network interface. And it is the um, spec that runtimes use to interact with networking plugins so that you can create arbitrary container networks. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to download this pre-compiled one for uh, you know, x86-64 and uh, use those. So let me get those real quick can get this line so I don't fat finger it. We'll download that. And we've already made the path. So we can extract those into the location. The other thing that Cryo needs is a network configuration file. And so we're going to create this etcd path, uh, this uh, path in etsy, uh, etsy cni net.d. And then if we go into the Cryo repo here under contrib cni, there's a there's a bridge configuration file. There's also one for localhost here. These are two example um, CNI configuration files. We're just going to use this one. So I'm going to pull that um, bridge comp file down and um, then that's all that's required. We could start cryo after that. And if we uh, do control status cryo, we can see that it's running. So the next thing we're going to do is um, run, and there's a client component to this, cryo control, and you can uh, do like a pod list. There's nothing running right now because we haven't set up Kubernetes, which is what we're just about to do. So I'm going to go ahead and install Kubernetes and etcd. Uh, etcd is the backing store for Kubernetes, and so you need to install both of them. 
Uh, this takes a little while, so I'll cut and come back when it's done. Okay, now that that's done, uh, etcd is ready to run out of the box, so we'll just start that. And then uh, we need to change a few things about the Kubernetes uh, configuration so that it's so that it will start without the TLS and some more advanced things. So um, in the API server configuration file, I'm going to remove the uh, this one service account admission control, um, which I'm not going to go into what it is, but it won't start unless you set do some additional configuration. But we're not going to set up a secure uh, environment here because we're just playing around. So we'll take that out. And then the other thing that we need to do is update the kubelet configuration file. By default, it's going to use the default runtime, which is Docker. So we need to pass some flags to let it know that that's not the runtime that we're wanting to use. And those two flags are container runtime equals remote and container runtime endpoint and point it at the cryo socket. And um, this socket, you know, cryo is listening on the other end and Kubernetes is going to talk CRI to cryo across this socket. Um, just to make this more compelling, um, right now, if you if I start the kubelet service right now, um, Docker will come up with the kubelet because right now Docker is a package level dependency of Kubernetes and uh, Kubernetes is uh, really Docker is the default runtime. So, but just to demonstrate that we don't need Docker at all when we're using cryo, we're going to disable it. So like, you shouldn't normally do this, but I'm just making a point here. We're going to go into the service file and remove the dependency on the Docker service. And then we're going to reload uh, system D. All right. And uh, now that we've done that, we are going to start up Kubernetes, which this is the whole suite of Kubernetes processes here, the API server scheduler, controller manager proxy, and the kubelet. All right. And if we do a kube control get nodes, we'll wait for our node to be ready, which it already is. So um, the next thing we're going to need is a pod. So we will create a, um, a pod called hello OpenShift, and it pulls down a container from the Docker Hub that is already up there that all it does is this application comes up, listens on port 8080. If you curl it, it returns hello OpenShift. So we're going to create that pod. All right, and if we get the pod, creating the container. Okay, now it's running. So, and here's where the fun begins. If I do Docker PS, uh, Docker's not running. How can this pod be running here if Docker is not running? And that's because cryo is running and passing it directly to run C. So if we do uh, cryo control pod list, you can see here's our hello OpenShift pod. Um, and you can see, just to show, I mean, there's no remnant of Docker running anywhere on this system. You can do all the things that you normally do, like describe the pod. Um, we can get the IP address that the CNI plugin gave us right here. And if we curl that on port 8080, we can see that our application is running. Um, if you take a quick look at the IP configuration, here's our CNI bridge. Here's the virtual ethernet endpoint in the host network namespace that is connected to the other end, which is in the containers namespace. Uh, things that you can, you know, all the, all the normal stuff works. You can view the logs. Uh, servicing request came from when I curled our application before. If I do it again, you can see that there's another request. And if we, let me start a busy box container real quick. And you can see exec in action. You can attach to the pod just as you would expect to be able to. All right, that's already running. And if we exec into this pod here, with bin sh, I'm in the pod. You can see the other end of the virtual ethernet endpoint there. And so here is Kubernetes running on top of cryo, Docker nowhere to be found. Um, so this is a really exciting project, in my opinion, um, and really slims down the um, runtime layer that you have to run on your Kubernetes nodes.